All right, welcome to another edition of uh, Chess Openings Explained. I'm Jonathan Schrantz, and today um, a lot of people were requesting the French. So I wasn't really going to do the French tonight because last week we did the Karl Kahn, and it's, you know, the pawn structures can sometimes be a little bit similar. Um, I was thinking maybe I'd do something a little bit sharper, do some Sicilian, do something else. But I noticed how many people wanted to see the French, and then my dad told me I should cover the French tonight. So, so this is for you, Dad. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we'll begin, and we'll be looking at, today we're going to be looking at the, uh, the McCutcheon, which is a line I'm surprised a lot of people don't know about, because I was just talking to some people in the club, and it turns out a lot of people don't even know what this opening is, which means it could be a really great surprise if your opponent is, is not expecting it. You can really get the, the advantage. And uh, it's a long, it's sort of a strategical struggle, which when you play the French, typically you're, you're a strategically minded player, and that's the kind of thing you're going for. So we'll jump right into it. Um, the French is defined after just one move, after e4. Black plays the move e6. So similar to like when we played the Karl Kahn with c6, the point is after white takes the center, because if you can play e4 and d4, you should, Black will, on his second move, strike at the center with the move d5. So there's a couple moves uh, White can choose from here. There's about four moves that are played regularly, and even a lot of sidelines already just in this position. White needs to decide what he's going to do about his e-pawn, because it is attacked. So if he does nothing, we'll take it. So the most common move is knight c3, and we'll be looking at that today. The other popular moves are knight d2 which is the Tarash. There's uh, e5, which is the advanced variation. And then there's the exchange variation. But today, we're going to be looking at knight c3. And here, black has two main choices. Today, we're going to be looking at knight f6, which can usually lead to the, the classical lines, or it can lead to the McCutcheon, which is what we're going to focus on. Black's other option is to play the winnower. Um, which tends to lead to some sharper positions. So if you're an attacking, fighting player and you still want to play the French, these are the lines you, you probably want to look at. But today we're going to go a little bit more classical with the move knight f6. And again, there's uh, another branch in the theoretical tree. There's two popular moves here. We're going to look at the most popular, which is to pin the knight. Um, that's, that's one way to deal with the, the threat of your e-pawn. The reason you, you played the move knight f6 is to attack the pawn again. So once more, you're threatening to win it. So white will usually either push and, and force your knight back, and that's, that's a very decent way to play, or he'll pin your knight. And in this position, the most common move, if you want to play the classical line, is the move bishop to e7, which I'll show only briefly, mostly because I have a funny story to tell. Uh, white will play the move e5, and after you go back, he has two choices. So there's a lot of choices even in the opening. So the French is really rich in possibilities. In a lot of moves, you know, there's several moves you might need to know if you want to play these lines. So you can even spend kind of a lifetime just learning the French in the same way a lot of people spend a lot of time with different Sicilians. I mean, there's so many Sicilians. And equally, there's so many French de you know, defense moves. So OK, the Alakine Chatard Gambit is one possibility. So you're, you're offering a potential pawn to get some, some active play. But the classical line is when white just takes the bishop. And now the, the queen will take back. And on the surface, this is pretty good for white because all of his pawns are going to end up going to some dark squares, usually, in this variation. So that's really good for him. And also, this guy is a little bit silly. And when you play the French, you might even call this bishop the French bishop, because it's often you know, your bad bishop. Your strategy will revolve around, how can I make my bishop good, or, or something like that. So this looks pretty appealing for, uh, for white. And in a way, it is. And I know a lot of people have been put off of playing you know, the French just because of the classical line. They don't really like the positions that, that black can get into. They're fine, and I play it, I've played it a lot myself, so it's, it's a perfectly fine way to play. But if you're kind of sick of it, the McCutcheon is the, is the way to go, so we got an answer for you. And we'll get to that in a moment. But I want to show this just so I can tell my story. Come on in. Um, I've had this position. I was playing in a team tournament, so I, I was playing with one opponent. So I ended up playing lower rated people because I was on board two of my, my two person team. And I played three 1200s in that tournament, and I had, black, or I had white against all of them. 
So I had the white position here. And in every game, black made the same exact mistake. So I won three games this way in one tournament. Um, the big mistake is black plays the move c5. So I'll give the audience a quick chance here. Uh, what is the problem with the move c5? It's already a blunder. A yeah, why is c5 a mistake? That's, that is the question. And I'll give you a hint. If you check out these, these dark squares, man, they're really weak because the dark squared bishops were traded. So white does have a way to exploit the weak dark squares. Nothing? Nothing. All right, fine. Awesome. Knight b5, and now you have two threats. Uh, the knight is jumping in on either one of these squares, and it's going to be trouble. So, I mean, you can castle, and you can give up your, your rook, um, or you can allow the check. You can play something like this, and you, you'll get checked. And, OK, this also is it's not a lot of fun. And we're not going to go too deep into it. I just wanted to mention that's the alternative to, to playing the McCutcheon. OK, so we return to the bishop g5 line. And now this is the move that makes it a, a McCutcheon. Bishop to b4, so you're pinning this knight. But you may be wondering, if you've never seen this before, well, wait a minute. White is going to play the move e5, and my knight is pinned, so aren't I going to lose my knight? So after e5, you have to play the only move here for black. You have to attack the piece that's pinning your knight. So h6 is the move. And now, most people will retreat their bishop. The most common that we're going to look at is bishop d2. But it's worth mentioning um, what happens if they take the knight on f6. Because I know in a lot of, I've played a lot of people even in blitz, even you know, people a lot higher rated than me, and they've even played this variation. And it's, it's actually OK for, for white, but uh, most people won't play it that actually know what they're doing because they don't like to give up their bishop. So China is almost in the room here. <clears throat> So what's happening here? It, this looks like it's, it's a really big achievement for, for white. But these lines are, are kind of known to be sort of equalish. And I kind of like playing them as black. What white will end up doing is he's going to play moves like h4 and queen h5. And he's going to try to make sure that it's, it's really hard for you to take this pawn. Because I um, mean this queen check would, it, would kind of embarrass you sometimes. But <clears throat> black will just play queen to f6. I'll just show this line briefly. So this is the kind of thing that will normally happen. The queen will eventually get the pawn back. And OK, black's going to get his pieces out, and he's going to castle on the queen side. And if you are to play this line, you do want to keep this dark squared bishop on the board. He's really important, because you do have some weak dark squares in your, in your camp here. So that's uh, just one line I just wanted to touch on that briefly before we head to the main line, which is bishop to d2. <coughs> Um, we won't be covering other lines. There's other places to retreat your bishop. You can go to e3. You can go to c1. But today we're going to focus on the main line. And the purpose of this move is you're trying to force black to concede the dark squared bishop. So indeed, here you have to do something. Your knight is attacked. You would like to jump your knight into e4. But if you do this immediately, it would be a huge blunder. Because what would white play? Yeah. Knight takes knight. Knight takes knight, right. So if you take the knight, then you lose your bishop. And if you take the bishop, then you're down a piece. He takes back with the knight, not the queen. So that would be a big mistake. So black will first take the knight. And again, this move, the main line, might surprise you. But it's b takes c3. Let's look at what happens if we take with the bishop, because some people might you know, want to keep their, their r square bishop and avoid having the doubled pawns. But this is nothing special for white. Uh, again, we're going to jump in. And if they wish to keep their bishop, they're going to end up playing a move like bishop to b4. And the move that black plays here is c5. So we'll notice a couple things. Uh, either capture doesn't promise white anything. And in fact, if you take with a pawn, this is a big blunder. So we'll see how can uh, black take advantage of this move. This one is, is a little bit tougher. And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with this unprotected bishop. Knight takes c5. OK, if knight takes c5, it looks like you have a little trick here. That's right, so you're hoping he takes, and you're going to give this check. And then you're hoping that you get this bishop back. 
but I'm going to shock you when I play B4, and then you're not going to get your piece back. <laughs> so that is the right idea, though. Um, we're, on, we're along the, the right lines here. We're, we're looking for a, a good knight move that does take advantage of the bishop. So we're on the right track, and I'm glad somebody said that because that does, it does seem like it's a, an appealing move in this position. So how else? If, if only we could go to the other side with the queen. If only. Queen G5. Queen G5? Pawn. Does attack a pawn. Um, now knight F3 will come with tempo, though, protecting the pawn and kicking your queen away, and preventing the trick that you haven't seen yet. <laughs> Have you got it? Knight takes F2. Awesome. Knight takes F2, which is a great move. The point is, if you take with the king, after this check, uh, you're going to lose your bishop. So there's already a, a little trick there, which is why they'll, they'll often just take with the bishop in this position. And now in this position, you got their bishop back, which was their whole point was to try to keep the bishop, but that doesn't work. Uh, Black's going to play moves like knight d7, queen c7, and he's going to try to get these, these pawns back. You can try to hold on to all of your pawns, but it's not going to work for very long. So OK, it's hard to protect all of your pawns. Now, in a, a training session for this lecture, this move was suggested, but this is a mistake. So let's see if we can figure out why just trying to pin the knight and then saying, I'll get to keep both of my, my pawns here, and I'll be up a pawn, and you know, I'll, I'll play knight f3 to defend the e pawn, I'll play b4 to defend the c pawn. But black has a really good move here, and it's kind of the same as the trick we just saw. So let's see if we can find this one. Queen a5 check, and the bishop is lost. So OK, there's no way of, of saving the bishop, so this would be a mistake. And I just pointed out, because I, somebody tried to play this against me today, and there's a quick refutation that's the same trick. So that's the kind of tricks you want to be, be looking for as black. So now we have an idea of why in a, let's get back to our position here. After we take, they're going to take with the b pawn. So our knight is attacked, let's remember, so we got to move our knight. And we're going to go into e4, and we're hoping to get their bishop. It is possible to keep this bishop and sacrifice this pawn. Uh, this is one line that, that white can play. But we're going to focus on the main move here, which is to, uh, to force black to make a decision on the king side. So the move he's going to play is queen to g4 with immediate pressure on the g pawn. So black has to do something about this. Now, you can do two things. A very popular move is the move g6. But notice this does weaken the king side. So today we're going to focus on the, the move that hasn't been played in as many games, but it is the, the more modern trend. It's to avoid uh, br making any weaknesses on your king side, because white's trying to play for a, a king side attack. And you play the move king f8, defending your pawn. So you're not going to castle in this game. And it might seem kind of weird. OK, your, your rook on h8, where is he going? He's not going anywhere. You know, how are you going to get him out? It's going to take some remaneuvering. So we're starting to see the outline of what the plans are going to be in this position. So it's a good time to, to take a little pause and try to figure out what both sides are trying to accomplish. Now, according to the, the pawn pointing theory, White's pawns are all porting towards the king side, which means he has more space on the king side. So he's going to play over there, and he's going to try to play for a checkmating attack. Black, on the other hand, <clears throat> he's going to be thinking about play on the queen side and trying to take advantage of you know, the, the weak pawn structure over here. And he's going to try to play moves on, on this side of the board. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll see that in just a minute. Um, so his plans are going to be play on the queen side. White's playing for a, an attack. The most common move here is bishop d3, uh, forcing the knight to make a decision. OK, we want to take the bishop anyway, so let's take it. And now neither side gets the castle in the main line here. But OK, we'll see. So black wants to play on the queen side. So the move c5 is the most popular. And white's move here might surprise you if you've never seen this before. Knight f3 seems like a good move, but actually the most accurate move here is h4. You don't really know where this, this knight is headed. 
Sometimes uh, you're going to want to maneuver your knight all the way to h5, and there's two paths that you can take to get there. <clears throat> so you're not really sure where the knight's going to go. Also, part of white's attacking plan is he's going to bring the rook out and over, and he's going to put pressure on some of these pawns. So wherever the rook's going to go, he's playing for an attack right away, so he's got to get his rook into the game. So white will be attacking with four pieces and some of his pawns over here. He's got the queen, the rook, the bishop, and the knight. And so he has to try to do that. Black, on the other hand, he's going to defend. And if he defends successfully, then he's going to do well on the queen side in the end game. So black's strategy is to just know the, the attacking plans by white. It's important to familiarize yourself with white's plans so that you can defend properly. And then in the long run, you're going to have the, the better position going into the end game because of some of the weaknesses on the, the queen side. So these, these pawns here are pretty tender. So is this isolated pawn. And so we'll check out kind of what's, what's going to happen here. c4 immediately is possible by black. But we're going to look at uh, <clears throat> games today by Sergei Volkov. So he's, he's one of my, my favorite players just watching his games. And he plays the McCutcheon quite a lot. So in the database, he's played over 50 games of the McCutcheon. So if you're trying to study this, I definitely recommend you look at some of his games because they're, they're very instructive. And he spent a lot of time researching this. So he's already done the hard work. You can just go watch his games and, and check out all of his ideas there. <clears throat> and we'll check out one of his games here. So in the first game, he's playing a 2100. So he did pretty well because he's uh, 2600 and he was close to like 27 at his, at his peak. <clears throat> and all right. But the next game, we'll show you opponent that was evenly matched. So first, black will develop his knight. Again, you can play c5 first. And white begins the rook maneuver. So the rook's going to go to g3, which will force black to find some way to defend his g-pawn. All right, but first, we play the move c5, or c4, sorry. And here come the pawns. This is how black is going to get all of his counterplay. It's going to be on the queen side. So he shuts it down. Um, he's he's got a lockdown on these pawns. And eventually, if he manages the b4 break, he's going to be doing really well. White can actually put this bishop on two different squares. And so this is kind of our, our starting point. So we're going to check out from this position White's ideas. In the first game, we're going to put the bishop on e2. And in our next game, we'll put it on f1. The purpose of this you know, strange retreat is you're keeping the e2 square open for the knight. So the might, knight might want to use this square to maneuver around, potentially all the way to h5. So when you put the bishop on e2, you're not going to put a knight on e2. You know, probably the, the knight is going to end up going to h3. And you have some options of the bishop coming to h5. And we'll see those implications in just a second. <clears throat> OK, so black continues with his plan. White doesn't have any serious threats yet. He's going to expand on the queen side. And so white goes through with his plan. He puts pressure on g7. So now black has to defend. And OK, we'll defend with our rook. And now um, what, he, what white wants to do is he wants to get this bishop into the attack. So he's got to move his queen out of the way. So the only real square to go to is f4. You can go to f3, but you've got to worry that you're dropping your h-pawn. So OK, queen f4, the point is you're putting a bishop on h5, and then you're going to have threats on f7. So I've asked the class, if you were black, how would you start to prepare to defend? Because that's kind of what's important here as black. You need to know how you're going to defend the f7 pawn. And so you need to be thinking about it now, in addition to thinking about how you're getting play on the queen side. So let's first defend on the king side. How should we do it? Reroute this knight. This is a very common idea. So yeah, the knight can go to f5, where it will be protecting some of the squares. Um, it'll be shielding. And that is, that is definitely one thing that happens a lot in this opening. But also, the knight is quite useful over here, because it's, it's on some of these squares that you're trying to push your pawns to. Who's not very useful over here on the queen side is the bishop. So while 97 is definitely a, a possible move, 
And like the computer likes it in like every line. It always plays knight to e7. But most humans play bishop to d7. The point is, if your, your f pawn gets attacked, you just drop your bishop back and you've got protection. So white should attack and force the bishop back to e8. And we'll notice black is just defending over here and he's waiting. He's waiting to win on the queen side. And it's kind of funny, but what black will often try to do is have a little exodus with his king and he'll try to run all the way to the c7 square. That's kind of the safest square for the king. So it's funny, you put it on f8 and then you run all the way over to c7. And we'll see that in both of our games today. And that's uh, what you normally want to do when you're black. c7 is, is the proper square. You're really safe. Even if you open up the game eventually with your, your break on b4, your king is still going to be quite safe on c7. So <clears throat> here comes the knight. OK, the knight is, is eventually going to f4, which means white's going to have to spend another move with his queen. <clears throat> and OK, he's not doing anything to stop black on the queen side. And in this game, black doesn't do anything to stop b4 from coming, so black just gets to do it right away. Sometimes they try to stop you. They play moves like a3 and rook b1, and they try to stop you, in which case you would have to go a lot slower as black. You know, you just have to keep defending your pawns, preparing, and it's, it's important to time it right. So if you're playing in a game, make sure when you play b4 that uh, <clears throat> your opponent's not going to somehow get activity from it. It's, and it's kind of tough to judge, so it comes with, with a lot of experience. The problem with this for white, though, sometimes is the pawn on a3 tends to be really weak. So, so we'll see what happens here. Now, he's going to move his queen so that his knight has the f4 square. And he didn't stop black from playing b4. So in this game, he just gets to do what he wants. It's kind of nice to see this game because it, it kind of shows what happens when both players just do what they want to do and they just ignore their opponent as much as possible. <clears throat> so white did all of the moves he wanted to do on the king side and black did all the moves he wanted to do on the queen side. <clears throat> so okay, he wanted to put his knight on f4. So there he goes. And now it begins. The king march over to c7. <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> and this move is a bit of a mistake and you'll know that after he makes his next move, you'll, you'll kind of scratch your head, why do you play rook b1? It seems like a good square, but he's going to move it again on his next move. So black is doing quite well here. And in general, if you don't get checkmated, or you know, then you're, just, you're going to be much better in the ending. And that's what's already happening here. Black is, has a very nice position. He scoots the, the rook over. And now white moves his rook again. So I guess he was, he was unsure. And it kind of suggests that he didn't you know, know what he was doing. OK, black takes. And when white takes back, <clears throat> black now comes up with the plan, queen to b6. His point is, the queen is going to b4. Most endings will be favorable for him, especially if, if the queen ever takes the queen, and we'll, we'll look at it, and you take back with your a pawn. This pawn is going to be on an, an open file. And so we're going to kind of see this, this theme going on in our game here. And it's hard. What does white do on the, on the king side? How is he going to generate any play? Well, he's got to do something. He's got to come up with some break. So in this game, he's thinking f4, f5. But it's, it's very slow. Black has already made great progress on the queen side. So he's in a lot of trouble. So the queen was going to b4. So there she went. And now it would be a big mistake to, to trade if you were white. Once again, OK, the open file is going to be great for the black rook. And uh, he's going to be able to put a lot of pressure on your weak pawn here. So he's unable to trade. And he goes on f4. He's got to go something like this. He's got to generate some, some counterplay. So he's trying to do it. <clears throat> um, Black would like to connect his rooks. So he gets his, his bishop out of the way. A lot of the times, you know, this rook will go somewhere. And then he's going to swing his other rook in to some, some square over here on the queen side. <clears throat> And Bl white thought uh, black had a, a threat here. And he kind of does. He's worried about the move g6. Because if, if we just pass, um, we'll, just, we'll just wait a second. <clears throat> Not make the best move. But all right, he can play a move like g6. And when you move back, play h5. And now he's shut down all of the breaks that you have on the, the, queen, on the king side. You're going to have to like remaneuver your rook. And then you're going to have to push g4. It's going to take a lot of time. And black is still making a lot of progress on the queen side. So afraid of that, he brought his bishop back so he can meet g6. 
you know, getting ready to play h5 with the move h5 himself. So, OK. Black didn't play necessarily the, the best move here, but this move is fine. And white should realize he's worse here, and he should just trade these, these rooks. So <clears throat> he's, he's, he's a lot worse, so he should trade things. Instead, he keeps the pieces on the board. <clears throat> and so it's kind of like white is playing for a win. OK, this makes some sense. Look at how, how weak those pawns are over there. So white is doing something, but black is a lot faster. So <clears throat> all right, a good move. The knight is getting ready to jump into b, b5. The bishop has the a4 square. <clears throat> so a, a very good plan for, for black here. Um, <clears throat> OK, let's see. And now this move was another mistake. I don't think that white saw what black's next move was. So I'll let the audience try to come up with what was played here. Because he was probably expecting maybe he'll trade queens. Maybe he'll retreat the queens somewhere. But black didn't do that. And we, we kind of talked about when white plays a3 that that pawn is weak. So I'll give you guys just a second to try to come up with what the plan is here. And it's not a brilliant move. It's not like a, a wild tactic. It's just, just a good, solid move. OK, he kept the queen on the board, queen a4. So the knight is coming in to b5, which is going to you know, have a lot of pressure over here. So a3 was a big mistake. And I guess he, he didn't realize just how bad it was. <clears throat> so he's got to get on with his play here. And after knight b5, white blunders. And this is the big mistake um, that costs him the game. Even though it seems like a normal move. He plays queen e3. He gets the queen out of the way. Um, but it's actually a, a blunder that's going to lose the game. The right move here is really hard to find. So I'll, I'll give the people at home here just a second, see if you guys can, can figure it out. Uh, you can pause the video, too, if you want uh, to try to figure out how white can take care of this, because he's in a lot of trouble. You know, how do we, what's going on? Our queen is attacked. <clears throat> but, uh, but OK, here it is. I'll reveal the answer. He can play the move rook to b1. And white will still be worse than this line, but it's his best try to, to save his game. So you're, you're saying, OK, well, OK, I take your queen, right? Now, white will insert the move f6. The point is, the king has to go to the back rank. And now the rooks are no longer connected. So white can safely take the rook. So you're going to get some pieces. You're going to get a rook and a knight for the queen. But black's position is, is quite enviable here. OK, so white's going to take some of, this, some of these pawns. But OK, at some point, he's going to play the move king c7. He's going to kick your rook away. And black will still be better here. But this was white's best try. Instead, in the game, we saw queen to e3. So now we just take the pawn. We just take on the pawn. And we're attacking c2. So white has to do something about that. So you don't have time to like pin the knight and try to win it. Because, OK, there's going to be checks coming here. So uh, he first gives the check. And then he has to protect his pawn. So we all welcome Danny Machuca to the audience, our all-star. Now we're getting serious. Um, all right, so he comes up with a nice way to attack the pawn again. And now his rook is infiltrating. So his plan on the, the queen side has been a real success here. He's able to get all of his pieces in. And you're, when the c pawn falls, you know, your whole queen side is collapsing. And OK, we got this pass pawn. When we take your c pawn, we're going to have two pass pawns. White is in a lot of trouble. All right, he tries to defend. And now black missed a tactic. <clears throat> And we have a brilliant tactician in the audience who can maybe find this move. Right, awesome. Yeah, so the point is uh, you, you can take here with knight b1, forking the, the king and queen. So this tactic was missed. And it was missed twice, two moves in a row. So OK, even the, even the best missed some good tactics. Uh, instead, queen b4 was played. Obviously, this is a, a good move, too. White doesn't really want to trade and, and help connect your pawns. But OK, he takes one of the pawns. So again, rook c2 is best with this, this little tactic. But it was, it was missed. OK, so instead, <clears throat> bishop to a4, Like, how many times can you attack the same pawn? So he's using all of his pieces now. And 
All right, you're just you're in a lot of trouble. He trades queens. It's it's not going to help him. You're still dropping your pawn. All you can do is is prepare for the pawn to be gone. And all right, things are things are really falling apart. It's it's not pretty here. And these guys are looking really good. So he he pushes his C pawn. Now his his bishop is getting ready to come back and pin the knight. And it's it's basically over here. White tries to get some counterplay. Um, he has this is his target, but black is just too fast now. Okay, he pins the knight. You all right? Now you can just take here if you want, but uh, but what's the point of allowing any counterplay? So he plays rook f8. Now you're not attacking here. White has some plans of of keep attacking the pawn, but it's, it's not going to be fast enough. Okay, so he gets out of the pin, but now we can take your knight and remove the defender of d4. So that was played, and all of a sudden, black now has three pass pawns, and the, the bishop is attacked, so it's going to go somewhere where it attacks this pawn. And, you know, you could e obviously easily just defend it, and you'll win, but the move c2 just ends the game right away. And white resigned here. The threat of rook to b1 is just too strong, and you're going to lose a lot of material, and, and the game is, is over. So <clears throat> that was a, a good example of what happens when both players play what they want to play. White played for a, just a king side attack, ignored everything that black wanted to do. Black defended properly. He understood all of the, uh, the attacks that white was going to come up with. And then his queen side advance won the day for him. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> so we'll look at one more game here by, uh, by Sergey. And this game is against somebody much higher rated, so they were almost the same rating at the, when they played this game. And we'll check it out. So we'll go back to our, our position, right? the McCutcheon. So they, they attack our knight. We have to attack the piece that's pinning us. They retreat. We have to take their, their knight first, and then we hop in. Uh, Queen g4 forces us to either play g6 or king f8. King f8 is what we're looking at today. Uh, they force us to take the, the bishop. We're happy to do so. We get to play c5. <clears throat> and uh, here we go. We'll notice we get back to this position. <clears throat> now in the last game, the bishop went to e2, which is, of course, a, a good move. But now we're going to look at the, the different move here. Bishop to f1, which we mentioned was possible. The point is e2 is, is available for the knight. OK, so. <clears throat> and I like what black decides to do here. He protects his stuff in advance. We know that the rook is, is probably going to g3. We understand, OK, the knight is coming in. And he prepares to immediately run his king over to the square we know we want to go to, c7. And he does it as early as possible in this game. You don't have to do this. You can, of course, play you know, just moves like b5, uh, a5. You, you can do these sorts of plans. But in this game, he's, he's prepared for a, a mass exodus of a king. And he's, he's not joking. He just goes for it. The king is running to c7. All right. We know the knight is coming in. And now black kind of has a little problem. OK, this is going to go here and put some pressure on our g pawn. We, we understand that. But he's prevented us from playing the move king d7, which is what we were trying to play. Because if we played king d7, what would white play here? Knight takes d5, exploiting the pin. So notice it won't let me take the knight because of the, the pin here. <clears throat> so he had to come up with a way. How can I uh, you know, get my king over to the, the square I'm trying to go to and also deal with the fact that my g pawn is about to be attacked? That. He played queen to f8, which protects the g pawn in advance. And now the king has a safe route over to the c7 square. <clears throat> OK, now the, the, the the knight isn't on e2. Makes sense for the bishop to be there. And the king keeps going. We know where he's going. And white plays all the moves we're, we're expecting. <clears throat> and uh, in a minute here, we're going to get our king to c7. All right, this is a useful move. Um, sometimes he's going to go here. <clears throat> also nice for us, one of the things with the, the queen on f8 that, uh, that we should, should mention here <clears throat> is she'll often be able to go all the way to the a3 square, which will prevent white from ever playing a3 himself, or a4, trying to prevent our, our queen side counterplay. And we'll see that soon. <clears throat> All right, queen f4, a very typical move. The king gets to where he, where he wants to go. And now this is the plan by white. He's got to do something over here. 
So in the last game, we saw somebody go f4, f5. Here, white begins with g4. So we'll, we'll take a good look at this, uh, <clears throat> this pawn advance. And now, black gets to play the move that he wants to play here. So he gets to play his queen to a3, preventing white from moving his a pawn. And now this, this rook is stuck passively defending the pawn. What happens if we take this pawn? There's a tactic here for black. Awesome, right. So there's, there's pins all over the place in this opening. And this is a sacrifice you always want to be looking for when you're black. The knight will often sacrifice itself for, for one of the pawns here. So in this case, uh, knight takes d4 would be good. The point is you can't take because then you're, you're dropping your rook. <clears throat> all right, yeah, so I mean, there's, there's some pretty rich possibilities here. <clears throat> Queen e3, though, is a sensible move. Uh, now the rook is protected, so the sacrifices won't work. Also, the queen is protecting the d4 square, <clears throat> taking away any potential tactical possibilities. So black gets on with it, b5. At the right moment, he's going to play b4. Uh, he'll probably prepare it. <clears throat> and here he comes. OK, so he's, he's trying to get some, some play over here. He has to find some way to open up the king side. Otherwise, he's going to have no play in this game. So black just, uh, just calmly prepares. Uh, he might consider in the future a move like a5. Then he'll play b4 at, at just the right moment. And let's see what, what white's going to do. <clears throat> what is this rook going to do? Maybe it'll come here. Uh, maybe it'll go here and support the f pawn push, which it will because I know the game. <clears throat> OK, so black gets on with it. And white comes up with his plan. He's going to play f5. He's going to have, you know, with the rook on the f file, he'll be able to at some point take here, and the rook will have the, the open file. And now is the time, so b5 was played. So white gets on with it. So both people are doing what they're trying to be doing. And here black makes a really strange move. Black's position is quite good here. He's a lot better. And then he makes this, this really strange move, queen to b2, which throws away his, his entire advantage. Um, <clears throat> OK, white now just kicks the queen back. And that was kind of a, a wasted turn. Now white gets to do something he wants to do. So he just reroutes the knight. He's putting some pressure here on e6. At some point, he'll, he'll take. Obviously, we're never going to take here, because then our, our d-pawn is going to be too weak. <clears throat> so OK. g5. And it's, it's funny. I've seen it. It only seems to be in his games. I've seen a lot of games with the McCutcheon. And I notice Volkov, he plays g5 in a lot of them. It's a good way for black to stop a lot of the, the counterplay on the king side. And it's kind of unusual. Normally, you don't want to push your pawns on the king side, because that's where your opponent is attacking. But here, it does really limit uh, what white is able to do. So after he takes on Passant, we take back. <clears throat> All right, it's kind of nice that the, the pawns here on, on this side are, <clears throat> are nice and symmetrical. So if they ever push a pawn either way, we can always meet it with advancing the other pawn. So that's, that's a possibility, which is kind of nice positionally for black. <clears throat> All right, and I assume white says, OK, I'm a little bit worse here, so I'm going to try to trade the queens. So he allowed that to happen. Um, we can take our pawn back. <clears throat> but he first inserts the move g5. Um, white can take or, or just move his knight. And now we'll take back the pawn. And if white does nothing, we're going to play rook to a8. And then we're going to target this guy, and we're going to bring our, our rook into uh, a3. <clears throat> which will be a, a good square for the rook. OK, our rook is attacked, so we'll move it. And now white tries to rid himself with the weakness. He plays the move a3, which is kind of what you want to do. You've got to get rid of the weakness. But it also allows black to get a passed pawn here. So black pushes, and now he's going to make a passer. White can take once. And will this guy be strong, or will he be weak? Well, he's looking pretty good right now. We're only two squares away. So we'll see what uh, white comes up with. You can take first. <clears throat> and now here he comes with his rook. So he's getting ready to play rook h7 and uh, exploit this. He'll make a pin here, and he'll try to win this bishop. Now, if, whenever black can push his, uh, his pass pawns, he should do it. So he pushes right away. <clears throat> and now his, his rook is uh, you know, stuck here, stuck on the b file. He's got to prevent that, that guy from coming. And OK. But now black is infiltrating. Black is a lot faster here. So he played back. If you defend with your, your bishop here, actually black has a, a really good plan. 
Uh, he's a little bit faster. He can just go win this pawn. In the time it takes you to go win my bishop, and I'll, I'll go somewhere, I'm ready to take your bishop, and I'm ready to play a move like rook a1. So um, this would actually be quite good for black. So I guess he, he saw that. He decided to just put his, his king on d2. Obviously, that hangs the d pawn, so we should grab it. And now we have two pass pawns. <clears throat> All right, so things are looking good. Uh, he attacks our, our rook. And whenever he pins us, we'll just defend our bishop. OK, but white also has some counterplay, so we do have to be really careful. You're better as black, but it's still really complicated and sharp. Uh, he's going to try to attack our pawn here. And here Black decided to go for, for a kind of cool little tactic. Um, he just brought his king back. And now after he takes, who can find this tactical move? What was Black's idea? Bishop yeah, Bishop a4 was his idea. The point being, if you take, now there's a fork. Uh, we're going to attack your, your king and your rook, and we're going to win material. Also, it gives him a chance to get rid of the, the light squared bishop. So, um, OK, the rook gets out of the way. We get to t chomp off the bishop. And now we just need to find a way to make use of this, this really nice pass pawn. So, OK, this move is good. There's also there's some other moves, but this move is good enough. Now, we have two pass pawns. So when you can push your pass pawns, you should do it. White doesn't have time now to take this pawn, because what will we play here? Our main choices are pushing or taking the rook. OK. So d3, I can just put it on the board. That's what you're saying? OK. OK, this is fine. So right, we gained a tempo on the king, and OK, if you Try to protect your rook. You can lose your rook and stop me from queening immediately. But uh, if you go anywhere and protect your rook, I'm going to take it. And I'm too fast. You can go back and sacrifice your rook, but not really, because I'm going to block with my knight. So OK. <clears throat> so uh, d4 here is a, is a nice move, not giving white a chance to take his very strong b pawn. <clears throat> All right, so he goes back to defend. And when we can push our pass pawns, we should do it. So there we go again. Um, the king comes up. Well, we can push our pass pawns. We should do it. So he pushes his pass pawn. And we're, we're getting ready. So he is, he's blockading with his two rooks. And here, black missed the best move. He took the pawn. But there's even better. Because white is hoping he gets to take you know, some of our pawns here. If you're white, you're thinking, man, maybe I can just get one of these guys off the board. Life will be easier. Then I can focus on, on getting the other guy. And we got to make sure we don't lose these guys, or suddenly it's the tables have turned. The best move here, knight, knight where? Yeah, so 95 was played in the game. Um, 91 is actually a stronger move. This prevents uh, both captures of your pawns here. So if you take this one. Then we'll give this check. And we're, we're at least winning your rook here. <clears throat> I agree the move is superior. Uh, also, it should be mentioned you can't take this guy because of this move. So either way, we're, we're winning your rook. So you can't take. Um, taking the pawn is a good move. It just wasn't the, uh, the best. <clears throat> so welcome. People just keep coming in. Very popular class. <laughs> So all right, he ended up taking one of the pawns, which is good for him. But he's, he's in kind of a lot of trouble here. So we can remove one rook. And OK, this guy is, is quite strong. It's hard to move your knight because of this pawn. And uh, OK, so he gives this check. He can win another pawn. He's got to move his rook. And he, he trades into a, a winning ending soon. White accepts that he needs to lose an exchange here. So he, he gives up his rook. He allows this, this fork um, just to pick up that pawn. He was too dangerous. And this is actually a winning end game for black. <clears throat> it's it's going to be tough, you know, but a, a good strong grandmaster should be able to win this pretty easily. So he's just going to pick up some stuff. You don't want to drop your pawn. <clears throat> um, so he inserts this check. 
And then the last, the last trick here that White has up his sleeve, he, uh, in this position, pushes his pawn. So my, my last question is, what happens if we take this pawn? What was White's drawing idea? This was, White tried his last little trick here. Yeah? I think it's knight to c5. Excellent. Fork and knight to c5. How do you defend this pawn? So you move your rook somewhere. If white can take the pawn, king and rook versus king and knight is going to be a, a theoretical draw. But uh, OK, black was on to it. He just improved his king. And then white gave it up. So <clears throat> he's going to collect the pawn. And a rook with, and a pawn is going to be a win for black. And uh, OK, he's, <clears throat> he's a strong grandmaster. So they both were. So they, they resigned here. <clears throat> So hopefully that gives you um, kind of a unique move that you can play in the French. Maybe you haven't thought about playing the McCutcheon, or maybe you have for a while, and you just you wanted to see some of the ideas here. So I'd encourage everybody to, uh, to go and try it, try the McCutcheon. Um, please like, subscribe, do internet stuff, and uh, keep sending in your requests for openings. Maybe I'll pick yours next week. Thank you. Thank you.